Good morning or good afternoon everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. For this week's video I want to present a turnout configuration that may well be a game changer for all those modelers attempting to fit as much railroad as possible into their space. No, I'm not talking about a shorter turnout. I'm talking about one that can be installed in areas that would otherwise have been unreachable by conventional turnout geometry. So let's now head over to my workbench and take a look. I've printed out a couple of track segments full size to demonstrate this problem. This one at the back is a uniform large radius curve and this is a section going from straight to three foot radius with a short spiral easement. Now normally easements need to be a lot longer than this to work properly but hopefully by shortening it for the purpose of this demonstration will allow me to illustrate the point more clearly. Now let's first consider this broad radius curve. No, I'm not proposing using such a broad curve to get around the corners of one's train room, but often a wide radius cosmetic curve looks more interesting than a straight in some situations. This one is drawn at 8 foot radius, although the exact radius doesn't really matter, the principles are the same. The curve is too sharp to ignore and to cut a straight turn out into it, yet it's a far larger radius than any commercially available curve turnout which makes it difficult, if not impossible, to cut any conventional turnout into it. If we want to branch off to the outside, we can cut a straight turnout in using the diverging route for the main line. Now, although not prototypical, it does at least work physically on a model railroad. This one is a number seven. It does fit quite well, and it can be made just about perfect if we unsolder one of the joints on this last tie here so that we can curve the diverging route slightly beyond the frog. Now a large radius Y would also work, although at the expense of creating a reverse curve on the diverging route. Now of course if we want the diverging route on the inside of the curve, we're out of luck. I already showed you the number 5 straight turnout here. It's just not going to work. Anyone can see that. And here is the largest size of curve turnout that Fast Track offers jigs for. This is the 6046. With the outside curve radius of 60 inches, clearly we can see that it's not going to work. It's just too far off to approximate it. Here is a Pico curve turnout, which by the way has the largest outside radius of any curve turnout I know of at about 80 inches. It's still too sharp even trying to use a short straight turnout, we're going to end up with sharp kinks at either end and it's going to completely spoil the nice effect of the graceful curve. Now of course if you're hand spiking your own turnouts you can put any alignment you like through the turnouts. But if you can do that you really don't need my help. Now what if a regular turnout could just be bent to fit like flex track? Something like this. Well, although it's a little more complicated than for plain track, it can be done if the turnout is crafted with this in mind. This is a basic number seven skeleton straight from my fast track jig, but with some of the solder joints left out for now. Now see how it's flexible for most of its length. There is about a two inch section at the frog that is still rigid. And generally speaking, it'd be a bad idea to mess with this critical area anyway. Now, although my existing line of curved turnouts have curved frogs, if you sight down this one, you can see that the curve goes right through the frog. These are formed accurately with the benefit of a jig. And unless one is already proficient with hand building curve turnouts, any attempt to curve this already perfect straight frog is likely to lead to disaster. But either side of this critical area, the rails can be bent to pretty much any reasonable alignment, provided of course we are careful to avoid sharp kinks and to keep them properly engaged throughout the turnout. So let's start by taking this turnout and bending it around this broad curve. Now I'm going to use some of these Fast Tracks filing tools as weights to hold it in place against a template. And I'm going to work from both directions out away from the frog. And of course, without the jig to hold the rails precisely in place, track gauges are essential. I like to use these three point gauges from microengineering to hold the rail while I'm soldering it and then come back and check everything with the NMRA standards gauge. 
Now before I get into it, there is a correct way and an incorrect way to use these gauges. Two prongs go on one rail and the odd prong goes on the other rail. On straight track, it doesn't really matter which way around you put it. But on curved track, the two prongs have to be on the outside of the curve. That way we get a very marginal gauge widening around the curve, which helps getting stiff equipment such as long wheelbase steam locomotives around it. If you turn it around and put the single prong on the outside and the two prongs on the inside, you get a slight gauge narrowing, which is not what we want. It's likely to cause stiff equipment to bind. Okay, so I'm going to place the frog in alignment with the curve and put some weights on it. I'm going to do this end first because this is the less critical one and it's going to give me a larger area to clamp down while I'm working on the more critical area. I like to use these in tandem just to make sure I'm not introducing gauge problems. Um, apologies if my arm gets in the way, but I need to be able to hold it in the right place. Okay, with that end done, I can now spread my weights out a bit. Okay, now again, as, as I said, I'm going to work from the frog and work my way towards the end. And there we can see we have a turnout which closely follows that 8 foot radius curve. There is a very short section of straight through the frog, but that's really not going to matter much. Now for a slightly sharper curve, the way to do it would be to start with a large radius curve turnout, so we have a slight curve through the frog already. And that's the way I would do it if this curve was close to the radius of this one. And then that should work just as reliably as any conventional turnout. Now what about this other example here with the easement at the end of the curve? Let's take my other sample turnout. This is how it comes off the jig. I've soldered the first tie on both sides because otherwise the rails are going to be floppy and I have a feeling it's going to be difficult to ship them without damage. But everything else along here, there's only one solder joint per tie has been finished. Let's undo this one. And now this turnout is flexible. So in the case of fitting it into an easement, the frog will be put at the end of the easement so the diverging rails are straight. And then we will just curve this one exactly as I showed you the last time until it matches our template. That way we have maintained the perfect easement at the end of our curve but gained ourselves some extra length on our passing siding. Now, in either case, the standard tie strip, called the quick stick, is no longer going to fit. As we can see. However, fast tracks do have another product that will suffice. This is what they call a twist tie. And at first glance, it may not look much different. But if we look closely, we can see that the webbing that joins the ties is only on alternate sides. So let's see what happens after I cut it from the carrier sheet. Now with the twist tie removed from the carrier sheet, it is flexible. We can bend it to any shape you want to. Now it's not an ideal solution because this is not what Fast Tracks intended these for. They are designed for people who want to hand spike everything without the use of the jigs. Now having said that, it'll be much faster to use one of these than it would be to cut individual ties from basswood. Now we're going to have to cut it into several pieces, removing the ties that have been replaced by the copper ties.
Now unlike the quick sticks, these twist ties are handed because they have lines engraved on them to assist in positioning the rails. Of course, ironically, using them this way, the tie strip is being applied upside down, so starting with a twist tie intended for a turnout of the opposite hand actually works better. For an actual situation where this technique would have been useful, let's take a look at an area of my own layer that has received lots of compliments. The main line curve through this station area starts at around 90 inch radius through most of the length of the near turnout. See the crossover here where I'm circling the mouse? And then it gradually straightens out through the remainder of the crossover. Now, although I hand spiked this track prior to starting with the fast tracks jigs, this arrangement could now be duplicated with the use of two left-hand number seven turnouts, bending one into a curve, as I just demonstrated, and the other into an asymmetrical Y, bending it the other way instead. Well, actually, the turnout at the far end could even be straight, as the curve through it is so slight, but a close examination shows that the curve is indeed there. The turnouts leading into the industrial spurs over here could also be duplicated by the same method, although the curved diamond would probably still have to be built the hard way, or the alignment modified to accept a straight one instead. Supplying flexible turnouts like this is not going to be an all-inclusive answer for everybody. And of course, there is some degree of skill necessary in turning the flexible skeleton into a reliable turnout. As of the time of recording this, I am still experimenting with the best way to produce these flexible turnouts. For the toe end of the turnout, I think that soldering the curved stock rail to the first copper tie will go a long way towards keeping everything in place until the customer is ready to install it. I think that leaving everything floppy is just going to leave it too flimsy and prone to damage while shipping. For the rails diverging at the frog end, I'm not sure whether to solder them up solid and let the customer release one side in order to adjust it. It may even be better to leave that last copper tie off altogether, just the way the designers at Fast Track intended it to be in the first place. I'll be able to answer these and other questions as I continue to experiment. Now for the time being, rather than attempting to list them in my online store and risk having customers buy them by mistake, not understanding what they're purchasing, I'm just going to offer flexible and custom curved turnouts as special orders. So if you would like me to create one or more custom curved turnouts for you, please send me a message through my website. The link is posted down below. Be aware, however, that there is a lot more work involved, so they will be more expensive than taking the nearest available standard size. Flexible turnouts, on the other hand, will be offered for the same price as the rigid skeletons. And I'm also going to put this one up for sale on the website, the one that I created for you on camera. The specifications for it are code 83, number 7 crossing angle. The outside substitution radius is approximately 8 feet. I don't know exactly what the closure radius is, but it is approximately 3 feet. And obviously there is only one of them. So I will list it as a single item. The first one to click on it and complete the order will get it. Well, that's all for this week. Now I know that these turnout videos have been less popular on my channel than some of my other offerings, but I still hope that it has been interesting and useful to at least some of you. I've had several comments recently from people who want to see me do another layout build. And for all of you, I have good news because last week I did start on a brand new layout build. I'm not going to give too much away at this time, but as a reward for those of you who have watched this video right to the end, I will say that it is an impressive triple deck layout and it includes a four track helix, which is the first area I will be building. So keep watching this space. So I will just sign off here and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.